Praise God. Second Peter chapter three and verse number eight. Second Peter, third chapter, verse eight. Amen. Praise the Lord. I am so thankful that we can face the future in faith. Amen. We can look at the future as Christians and we don't have to be fearful as to what is going to happen or what, what's next. Uh, we, we look at the future with confidence in God. Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 8. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, we can face the future with faith in God. Now, there's a lot of things that are going on in our world right now that uh, from the natural perspective would cause us all to say, Lord, what is happening? What is happening? Uh, it's, it's almost in every, every area. Now, this week we've been blessed. Brother Snow, uh, Brother Snow is like a shot in the arm of encouragement and faith. Amen. Uh, he, he believes God, and God honors his faith and uses him in a lot of wonderful ways. And we all need that. If you missed out this week, you just missed out on something that no doubt you needed I needed, we all needed, uh, as a, just a special blessing and encouragement as it really relates to our confidence and our faith in God. Amen. Praise the Lord. And there, there are, as I said, there's, there's a lot of things that are happening today, uh, political confusion and economic confusion. There, there's, uh, there's such unrest and violence all over our world. Uh, it's a troubling, troubling time. When you just look at face value at all these things uh, that uh, that are going on, there are famines in certain parts of our country that are uh, there are very very serious circumstances uh, that many places in our country uh, are, are are faced with uh, right now. But let me just give you a word of hope and a word of encouragement this morning because we serve a God who is not just a God of the past. On the front of our bulletin today uh, is that great verse from Hebrews 13 and 8. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. He's the same. You see, that's the, that's the wonderful thing about our Lord is that he is, not, he is not confined or in any way restricted by time. God doesn't even exist in the realm of time. And uh, we do. We're limited by, by, by time. But as Christians, we look at the past and we can see from God's word, we can see the plan of God and how that it unfolded in, in the scripture all the way up to the time that Jesus came and, and even actually all the way up to the time that we're living in right now as, as Christians, born again Christians. We can look to God who's been faithful yesterday and we know that today he's faithful but the problem we have is we can't seem to see into the future. And we don't know what the future holds, but we know that God is in control of it. Amen. 
Amen. So things seem like they're spinning out of control in our world. And I advise you this a lot of times, and I just want to encourage you today. Don't waste your time with all this Fox News and all this baloney. If you're keeping up uh, with the news 12, 24 hours a day or however many hours a day, you're going to get depressed and discouraged. And, and you're going to look to what's happening in our world from, the, from a perspective that's a man-made perspective. And we as Christians need to look at the world that we're in right now through the eyes of faith. He's in control. Jesus is in control. It's not spinning out of control like you might think that it is. All the things, as much as God, and when you look at the Old Testament and see the wonderful plan of God and how that all the wonderful types, every story, every, every chapter in the Word of God in the Old Testament was pointing to the day that Jesus the Messiah was going to come. All of the Old Testament was pointing to that day that he was going to be revealed. Then he came into the world to provide hope and salvation. We're living on the other side of the cross, you and I are. And we can look back and say, isn't that amazing? Isn't that wonderful? When we read the stories and we hear uh, the great messages of the word of God that remind us that God was back there in the past. And we know that he's with us today and we need to be assured of the fact that he is with us in the future. Amen. Since he's not restricted by time, we know that God is already Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's also in the future. And he's called us, you know, the people of God. Abraham was the father of faith. And he was called of God uh, uh, to leave his home, his family, everything. And the Bible says that he didn't know where, not knowing where he was going. He just heard the Lord and knew the voice of God and knew that God was saying, leave your home, leave your family, leave that, and you're going to go to a place that I'm going to tell you to go. He's the father of faith. And so he was talking to Abraham about his future. Amen. You go because I've already got your future planned out. I've already got every step you're going to take. It's already ordered. It's already planned by, by God. Amen. Let me read you some verses, Hebrews 11 and 13, talking about all these great people of faith. They all died in faith, not having received the promise, but having seen them afar off. They didn't see uh, it realized, but they saw it afar off. It was as, as, as if it had, was already their possession. They didn't actually receive the promise, but they saw it afar off. They saw the future and they recognized the plan of God and the, and the unveiling of the Messiah and all that was going to come. They saw it afar off and they believed is counted unto them for righteousness sake. Romans 4 and 17, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him who he believed, even God who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were future. Amen. God, who speaks just as clearly to the future as he does to the present and to the past. And so we face the future. We don't know what's going to happen because we're, well, we, we belong to God and we're a child of God. Then we have a, a full confidence and assurance that whoever's elected president or, or whatever happens to the economy or, or what's happening next year at this time, uh, we, we can sit around fretting and worry, worrying about what the future holds. But in reality, as Christians, we need to see through the eyes of faith, amen, that God is in control. Praise God. Amen. Now, that doesn't mean we should, we should stick our head in the sand and, and just ignore what's going on around us. No, it's clear from the word of God that the things that are happening around us in our world today, uh, we, we need to use those things as a, as a, a means of uh, motivation to motivate us to spiritual things, to motivate us uh, to, to the things of God. Amen. It should cause us uh, to be compelled to draw nearer to God, to get closer to God, to be more faithful uh, to the Lord in times such as we're living in right now. Amen. So don't ignore what's going on. Just don't let it control your thoughts about the future because God's the one that's in control of the future. Only let the current events that's happening right now, only let that be a motivation to you to get closer to God 
and to be ready for the coming of the Lord. Amen. Matthew 24 and 6. You shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled. It's not the will of God that you be grieved, that you be troubled, that you live your life under this cloud of fear and worry about the future. Be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Another verse is in, is in Matthew 24, 33. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the door. Another verse, Luke 21, 31. So likewise ye, when you see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. Amen. So these, these events that uh, uh, by, uh, from a worldly perspective uh, could be troubling and wor worrisome and, and could actually uh, get you down if you allow it to, but instead... We need to use it as a motivation to draw near to God. Use it as a motivation to prepare yourself to be ready for the Lord to come. 1 John 3 and 3. The Bible says, And every man that hath this hope. What's, what is the hope? The hope is that Jesus is going to come and he is going to, he's going to snatch the church out of here. Amen. That's the hope that we have. That just in the nick of time, Jesus is going, to, is going to come and catch the church. That's the blessed hope. But he that has this hope, the Bible says, uh, uh, purifieth himself, even as he is pure. That it motivates us to draw nearer to God, to self-examination. It motivates us to see, well, this world, it's, it's, there's just a short amount of time left before this age comes to a close. And so don't fear, but in faith, understand that Jesus is coming and we need to be ready. We need to understand that it's right at the door, that he could come at any moment, any time. And don't dread that, but look forward to the reality that we belong in heaven. Amen. That's our home. That's our destination. And as the saints of God, don't get too attached to this world. Amen. Don't allow yourself to get too uh, you know, encumbered with the things of this world. And don't allow yourself to get so wrapped up and entangled in this world and in this life that you lose sight of the fact that Jesus is coming and this thing is all coming to a close. And uh, that we need to stay busy, working, purifying ourselves, readying ourselves for the coming of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We should have that kind of an expectancy in our heart that the Lord is coming. Should we dread this? Should we dread all talking about these things? No, it was never that way in the first century church. In the first century church, it was they were looking for it. They talked about it. They greeted one another with Maranatha. It was always uh, an anticipation of the fact that Jesus is coming and prepare yourself. Be ready for the Lord it could come at any moment at any time. And now we see all these things that are all coming together right now. And we can see uh, with all of the events of our world uh, that it's becoming more and more a place that I don't really feel at home at. <laughs> This world is not my home, just passing through. Amen. My investments are in heaven. That's, that's where we need to focus our attention on the glories that await the saints of God and live in a continual state of readiness that Jesus is coming soon. Just want to give you a few other verses of scripture here this morning, and I hope that you will, you'll be encouraged. You know, Jesus said in, in the Revelation, I am the... Alpha, I am the omega. I am the beginning. I am the end. I am the first. I am the last. Amen. The glories of the revelation of God in the scripture from, from Genesis all the way to Revelation uh, reminds us of the fact that God reveals himself in history. He reveals himself present and he will reveal himself in our future. Amen. He's already there. He's in the past. He's in the present. There's, there's no dividing line for God. Uh, he is in every, uh, every. He's everywhere. He's even in our future. Amen. I am the first. I am the last. I'm already there. I'm all, I've already got the plan set in motion. And uh, uh, world leaders think they're in control, but they're not. I'm in control. 
Amen. Uh, people think that they can, uh, they can shuffle things around and make decisions about, uh, about the future. But if they do make decisions that have any effect, they're just playing into the hands of God and into the, to the plan of God. Because God is already there in the future. Amen. The scripture talks about the Lamb of God was slain from the foundation of the world. The plan of God, uh, all those many uh, generations centuries, however many years that it was, we have no idea of even comprehending it. But before the world ever was, before man was ever created, before man ever sinned, the Son of God was slain. The plan was already there. The future was already taken care of. So why not allow faith to be the focus of our life? We, we look at our world and we look at our life and our future through the eyes of of faith. Hallelujah. Glory to God. What are we to be doing in these last days? I've already described that we need to be living, preparing ourselves and living in, in readiness uh, for, for the coming of the Lord. We need to be purifying ourselves uh, as we prepare for the coming of the Lord. Let me give you a few other verses of scripture that may outline some of the things that we should be involved in right now as we prepare for these last days and for the coming of the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 5. The Bible says, Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts. And then shall every man have praise of God. The counsel there for us is we don't need to put ourselves in a position of judging judgment of others but instead we need to be judging ourselves judging, judging ourselves because the lord is going to come and when he comes he's going to bring everything to light so uh, it's too easy to get your attention on others and say look at them look what they're doing or look what they're not doing and uh, uh, get all of your attention on passing judgment on others when in reality Jesus is coming and we need to make sure that we've examined ourselves and we have we have made judgment of our own lives and that we are pleasing uh, to the Lord so judge yourself and not not others amen another thing it says in in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 1 it says if you be risen with Christ seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on the earth. For you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. Amen. What, what, what is that telling us that we need to be doing? We need to be developing a mindset, a mind our, our thinking, our, our mind needs to be fixed upon heavenly things. Amen. Developing a, a, a heavenly mind. Amen. Uh, fixing our attention upon eternity, on the, what the Word of God says about heaven and about the future and about the wonderful glories that are going to re be revealed. We need to be heavenly minded. We need to set our affection on things above not on this earth. Everything in this world is passing away, as we read to you there from, from uh, Peter. It's all going to dissolve. It's all going to burn up. Every possession, everything that you think is a treasure and so precious to you, it's only temporary in, in this world. So why uh, do we give so much of our attention and our focus to things uh, that are of this world when we should be setting our mind and our attention upon things that are above? Amen. Glory to God. Amen. How much are you investing in that heavenly kingdom? How much do you know about that heavenly kingdom? Well, you need to know everything that the Bible says about about it and what uh, awaits the saint of God and let that be our attention and our focus and instead of the things of this world amen glory to God another passage of scripture as it relates to the coming of the Lord 2 Timothy chapter 4 these words to Timothy young Timothy are also a charge to every one of us I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who so judge the quick and the dead 
at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, re- reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. What was he telling Timothy? Commit yourself to the work of God. Commit yourself to the work of the ministry. This is the most important thing this side of heaven, and that is that God's will be done on this earth. Amen. So let's commit ourselves, recommit ourselves to the work of the ministry, to the declaring of the gospel, to spreading the good news. Let's be involved in proclaiming the truth of the gospel. Why? Because the Lord's coming. The Lord is coming. Amen. And uh, he is going to appear. And when he does appear, then I trust that he finds you and me busy, involved in the work of the ministry. And what a wonderful thing that it is. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 24, talking about things that we need to be involved in. We need to be involved in ministry. And Hebrews chapter 10 and 24 tells us we should never neglect the church. Never. In light of the coming of the Lord, Hebrews 10 and 24, let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting or encouraging one another so much the more as you see the day approaching in light of the coming of the lord let's recommit ourselves to the work of the ministry let's recommit ourselves to the local church amen this is no time to become careless or lax in our commitment uh, to the church of the lord jesus christ we're warned here in the book of hebrews don't be like those in the last days that will begin to neglect this most precious thing uh, that we have, and that is the ministry of the local church. Amen. We're to provoke one another, it says. We're to consider one another. We are to, uh, uh, to exhort uh, one another. And that's not just with words. Let me tell you, just by your willingness to be faithful to God's house, it speaks volumes to many, many people. Volumes to many people. You don't even know those that are watching and observing your commitment to the church. Refuse. Commit yourself and make uh, serving the Lord, the work of the ministry, and the local church a priority of your life. Amen. And by the way, thanks to all of you who put the extra uh, effort forth and were faithful night after night during this revival. And not because you would wanted to get points for being here but because you knew that God had some things that he was saying to us and we needed to be here. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. James chapter 5 and verse 7. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Another exhortation as it relates to the coming of the Lord, the Lord coming soon, and that is trust the Lord. Be patient. Wait on God to do. We get so, you know, we, we just want to make God, do things when we want him to do them. Be patient. Wait on the Lord. The Lord in his own time will work and he will move. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth and hath long patience for it until he received the early and the latter rain. Be ye also patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Don't lose heart. Don't lose patience. Remain faithful to God. Remain faithful to the things of God. And know that in due season, you're going to reap. In due season, you're going to see God working and moving. It's the faithful who will enjoy the benefit of the harvest in their life. Be patient. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's not always an easy thing to do. But it's always the right thing to do. Be patient. Be steadfast. Another thing here is in in Jude. Only one chapter in Jude. Verse 21. Keep yourself in the love of God. Looking for the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ. Unto eternal life. And if some have compassion. Making a difference. And others save with fear. Pulling them out of the fire. Hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Amen.
Be busy for God. Be busy for God. And the things that should should capture our attention and the focus uh, of our life more than anything. And that is the fact that there are so many people that need the Lord. So many people have compassion. Make a difference in the lives of some. People that you come uh, into contact with that um, you don't know how they would respond. You don't know what their needs are. But you do know that God can use you to be a word of hope and a word of encouragement uh, to them. So uh, until Jesus comes, what are we to be involved in? Reaching those that are so far away from God. Reaching the lost. And I could go on with some other scriptures here today. I wanted to give you a word of hope today so that you would look at this world and the things of this world through the eyes of faith instead of fear and worry about what's going to happen. Parents who have little children are probably, you know, with all these this unrest all over our world, you know, what's going to happen? If you're not careful, you'll get overwhelmed with fear with all the things that are happening all around our, our world. I was flipping around listening to different commentators, and one guy said, if one of these guys gets elected, he was pointing out one particular, if this guy gets elected, then we are going to have the whole economy is going to collapse in 18 months. Well, he don't know that. He don't know the future, but he just he's just perpetuating fear and telling people what he doesn't really know is, is going to happen down the road. Let me tell you, my hope is not in any of these things or any of these politicians. My hope is only in the Lord Jesus Christ and the hope that we have in him. So I just want to encourage you today, put your faith in God. Put your faith in the Word of God. And don't be distracted by things. Just get your eyes upon the Lord. Get your eyes upon the call of God and the ministry that we are to be involved in and the work that He's called us to do in these last days. Let's get busy doing it. Let's step out in faith and let's do what the Lord calls us to do as far as uh, uh, individually and corporately as a body. Let's step forward right in the middle of, of, of tur turmoil and troubles uh, that our world just seems to be swallowing up in. That right in the middle of all that, God's grace can bring victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Father, we thank you that we have hope in you today. We thank you, Lord, that you were in the past. You're here presently, Lord, and you're already in the future. We know, Lord, that it's your will. You, you, you want to give an expected end. You want to give a hope and a future to every one of us because you're already there. You've already provided it and prepared it. So, Lord, I just pray that there would be no, no one, Lord, that would lose track or lose sight of the wonderful promises of God that belong to us here today and Lord that our eyes would be upon you that our eyes would be upon Jesus and upon the truth of your word and we live out our days Lord to give glory and honor to you hallelujah